Hi to everybody at Morpeth School, uh, it's Mr Bison here. I'm going to be setting you a quiz um, as a bit of a challenge today and the quiz has kindly been made by somebody called Mr Kelly, he does these fantastic quizzes. Um, all you're going to need to be able to do this quiz is a blank piece of paper um, so you can do some working out. There are going to be 12 questions but one of the questions is worth three marks so there's a total of 14 marks. As you know there are prizes for first, second and third place, you've just got to make sure that you get your answers in within the hour. Okay, so without further ado, uh, the first question is to try and tell me how many small orange triangles there are in this picture. Now, if you need to, you can pause the video at any point. I'm going to be going quite quickly through these, so you will need to pause at certain points to be able to work out the answer and write your answers down. So how many small orange triangles are there? I wonder if there's a quicker way rather than counting them one by one. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next question. So question two, here's a picture of a tree and it says which silhouette matches the tree? So if I were you, I would have a look through different parts of the tree, maybe start off with this top part. You see we've got three leaves here, maybe one of these trees here won't be able to be the right one. So you're going to try and have to see which tree matches the silhouettes, which silhouette matches this tree that we have here. And you just need to write down a letter for that answer for question two. Okay, I'm going to move now on to question three. Remember, you can pause at any point to do the questions. So for question three, it says we've got these different weighing scales here. This one's got two large metal balls and four smaller ones, three large and two small. And this one weighs at 28 kilograms and this one weighs at 30 kilograms. What your job is to do is to tell me how much would it weigh to have four of the large ones and one of the small gold ones. Now, you're probably thinking you could do simultaneous equations for this, but I know everybody who's doing this quiz might not have done simultaneous equations. So I'm going to just pop up a hint. And the hint is that the gold ball is actually three kilograms. So that should help you to work out how much there is in this last one. Pause here if you need to work this out, but I'm going to be going on to question four in just a couple of seconds. OK, question four. So we've got a kind of grid here and it looks like it's some kind of code where you need to write down the coded word for question four. Now, for example, I'll do the first letter. It's like reading a coordinate. You have C and one. So C and one. In fact, the letter that, that corresponds to is a letter C. Then you're going to do A1, E4, E4, all the way across like this. Now, this is going to spell out a word. You probably won't know this word. So what I'd really like for you to do is to look this word up in a dictionary or to Google it to see what it means and see if you can think why that word has been selected because it's to do with the way that these letters have been arranged. So this is going to be a word you probably won't recognise, um, but you'll learn it after you've done it by going and looking in the dictionary. OK, I'm going to move on to question five. Remember, you can pause. OK, these are Egyptian hieroglyphics. The question is on the next page, so you need to try and remember these. Now, these are actually um, how ancient Egyptians would write numbers. OK, so these were meant to represent different reeds. Um, there's a frog here. We've got a finger. We have um, someone who looks like they're sort of on their on their knees, raising their arms to the skies. And this is actually how Egyptians wrote their numbers. So I'm going to put a number on the next page and you have to tell me what that number means. Now, you can either write these down now so that you can see them on the next page or maybe you can flick back to this. So this is actually how ancient Egyptians wrote their numbers. OK, the number that you need to write down for me is this one. How much is this number that you've got here? Remember, you can always go back onto the, the previous slide to try and work what that, that is. It's quite, it's quite a big number. OK, just going to move to question six in a couple of seconds. OK, question six, what number should replace the question mark? So I think this one's quite tricky, but my tip is that there looks like there are lots of shapes that are overlapping each other. And the numbers have got something to do with the amount of overlappage that there is. So you need to try and work out what number goes inside this specific spot of the, all of these shapes that we have here. So what number would go inside there? Remember, you can um, take a bit of time to think about this because you've got you've got amount of time to do this. So you don't need to rush at the same speed that I'm doing it. 
Okay, question seven. This is the question that has got three different marks, okay? Do you remember I said at the beginning one of the questions has got three marks? This one is worth three marks. Now, these three words that we've got here are anagrams. Now, anagrams are where you can take the letters and put them in a new order and they spell out a different word. All of these words here, though, are maths words. And if I actually just drag this looking heart around, the only bit that I can show you is we've got this kind of bar split into four. Um, we've got some other stuff that seems to be going on there as well. We've got only three of the four there. Hmm, let's see what this bottom bit it says. One and three quarters equals seven quarters. So I'm sure you've all studied this in maths so far. We've got something to do with fractions here. Um, I wonder if you can think what these three words might be. My tip for doing anagrams is take the letters and if you write them in a circle, it helps the brain to kind of see what the word might be. So you've got three marks available to you there. Okay. So question eight, it says, this question has had every vowel removed. This question has had every vowel removed. Obviously vowels are A, E, I, O and U. Then it's had all of the words pushed together. All of the words pushed together. Answer the following maths question. So you know, don't need to tell me what this question is. You need to answer this question. So we've got some letters here. I might very quickly show you this simplify. I might separate them to make it a little bit easier. I'll very quickly show you this and I'm going to put it back. So if you're quick at pausing, you might be able to do this. So there's no vowels. There's no spaces. This is it, though, with some spaces. OK, with some spaces. So you need to answer the question, not tell me what the question is, but you need to give me the answer to that. OK, question nine. Um, I'm not going to say too much about this one, but this is it's what we call a dingbat. So you have to say these three different things that we've got here. I'm not going to say what this is or what this is or what this is meant to be. But when you say these three words together, it makes a word that we might use in a maths lesson. OK. So think about what these three things could be, say them almost like out loud, and then think of what that maths word might be. And then that's your answer for question nine. Okay, question 10. So we've got some clocks here, we've got some analog clocks, and we've got some digital clocks. And at the bottom it says that the time increases by the same amount as we go across each time. What is the time on the last clock? So we've got this time, then this time, and it's increased by a certain amount of time. It's then going to increase by a certain amount of time again, and then it's going to increase again by that same amount of time. I'm going to very quickly give you this hint. It might make things a little bit easier, but that's what the time looks like there in the third one. But I'm going to remove that. I'm not going to make it too easy, okay? So you need to try and say what the time is on the last clock. You only need to give me the digital time on the last clock. You don't need to draw out this. You just need to write down what the digital time is. Okay, question 11. So it says, follow the instructions to move the correct number of jumps in the correct directions on this polar grid. It's called a polar grid because at the middle is like the pole and you've got all of the things coming out um, as sort of like directions from that central bit. The question says, what colour circle do you finish on? So here's some instructions. When there is a letter C, it stands for going clockwise in the same way that the clock would move. When there is a letter A, it means you're going anti-clockwise. If it's I, you're going inwards towards the centre. And if there's an O, you're going outwards towards the outside. So I'm going to just give you a bit of a hint for this first one. You start here with 3C. This means move three positions clockwise. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3. And then 2I means you're going to be moving 2 inwards. 1, 2. You're going to keep doing that until you land on a colour with no instruction, and that's the that's where you finish. Okay, so you need to tell me what you finish on there. Okay, question 12, last one. You need to put these celebrities in order of Instagram followers from the lowest number of followers first. Now, I'm not very good on my celebrity culture, so I'm actually going to do these simplify hints here so you can see who they are. I can recognise some of them. I think this is this is Meghan Markle, this is Emma Watson, we've got Dwayne Johnson, The Rock here. I mean, pretty obvious who this is, you can see on the back of the shirt. So I've actually, I've not done too bad, but I'm going to reveal who they are, and then you need to put them in order from lowest to biggest. And the only thing you need to write down here is the letters. You don't need to write their names. So here are the different um, Instagram handles that they've got here. 
you need to go from the lowest number of followers to the highest number of followers. And you should try and guess this, um, but you just need to write down the letters in the correct order. Now, if we have some people who end up with the same mark out of 14, there is a tiebreaker question, whoever gets the closest. So the tiebreaker question is here. It says, how many people stood together to make this giant number in Orel, in, I should say Russia, in 2016? So there are a large number of people who have stood and they've made the number 450. Now I'm going to tell you now, there are not 450 people. There are, well, I'm not going to say if it's more or less than 450 people, but you might like to compare it to how many people are in Morpeth School. There's about 1,200 people in Morpeth School. Think about assemblies and how many people there are in those kind of bits as well. Um, so you need to guess how many people made it up all of this. And this will only matter if there's a draw for who's in first, second or third. Whoever gets closest to this number will, uh, to the correct number, they will get the point and they will, they will, win, they will win that bit. OK, so I'm going to do a separate video now for you with the answers. Um, good luck and make sure you get your answers submitted on time.